Today, I'm going to go deep on jumbo loans. We're going to be talking about jumbo loans, including what is a jumbo loan, credit requirements for jumbo loans, down payments for jumbo loans, interest rates for jumbo loans, and a lot more. Today's going to be a really good one, so let's get into it. First, what is a jumbo loan? Well, a jumbo loan is actually any loan amount that exceeds the conventional conforming loan limit. The conventional conforming loan limit is set by the Federal Housing Finance Agency, and they oversee Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are the major insurers of home loans in our country. Now this dollar amount, this loan amount, is generally going to change once per year towards the end of the year. We will get a notice from the FHFA of what the new conforming loan limit is. And it actually has been going up over the last few years. And that can go up, that can go down, it can stay the same, but it is set forth by this federal agency. Now, it's not the same nationwide, and this is also really important. The federal or the conforming loan limit here in Arizona is definitely going to be different than what it is, let's say, in Colorado or California. It will vary by not only state, but county. Now we're talking about conventional home loans here. There are other types of jumbo loans that do not adhere to this conforming loan limit, such as VA home loans, those also are offered on a jumbo level, but today we're really going to talk and focus on conventional jumbo loans, which again is any loan amount that exceeds the conventional conforming loan limit based on that county and or state. What are the credit requirements for jumbo loans? This is a really big conversation because we can have a client who can qualify for a conventional conforming loan, but may not be able to qualify for a jumbo loan. And it could be essentially just because of not only the credit score, but the credit trade lines, how old they are, how many that they have. So many things are really much more scrutinized in the jumbo loan arena that we really get into the actual details of the credit report itself when we're talking with borrowers and we're counseling them on their options, whether that is a conventional conforming loan and maybe a home equity line of credit to be able to increase their purchase price and leverage their home loans, or if that makes sense and they can qualify for a conventional jumbo loan. Credit is crucial, crucial, crucial. So generally on jumbo loans, the jumbo loan guidelines are much more restrictive, much more stringent. And if you're under a 680 on a credit score standpoint, it's going to be difficult to find a jumbo loan. It doesn't mean that they're not out there. It just means that there are fewer options available the lower the credit score gets on jumbo financing. What is the down payment for a jumbo loan? That's actually gonna vary by lender. And there are some lenders out there that offer as low as 5% down on a jumbo loan. Uh, in general though, think that the lower the down payment on a jumbo loan, the more restrictive the guidelines are going to be and the fewer options that might be available to somebody interested in a low down payment jumbo loan. Generally, we find that 10 to 15% down is a viable option in the jumbo loan arena, and there are definitely more availability in those ranges, but the more down payment, the better terms, especially when it comes to a jumbo loan and how those interest rates and costs are set. Also remember that the lower the down payment in the jumbo type of underwriting guidelines, the more stringent those guidelines are. So for example, if you're gonna do 10% down on a jumbo loan, you may have to have 12 or 24 months of PITI and HOA reserves, whereas if you're doing 20% down on a jumbo loan, maybe the guidelines only call for six months in reserves. So it's not just any one thing. We're looking at many, many, many different factors. First time home buyers, for example, there are rules around first time home buyers and jumbo loans based on a down payment and a credit score and the number of months of reserves that people have. So lots and lots of moving pieces. As a reminder, any loan that has less than 20% down, 
there's going to be some conversation about mortgage insurance, and that's not any different on a jumbo loan. What we find in the jumbo loan arena, though, is with low down payments lower than 20% down, there are some jumbo loans that offer traditional monthly mortgage insurance, and we also see jumbo loans that don't have mortgage insurance on them, but the interest rate slightly higher when putting less than 20% down. Which brings us to our next conversation. How do interest rates differ on jumbo loans versus conforming loans? Now I hear all kinds of myths and thoughts about this. And I gotta tell you, sometimes they don't differ. Sometimes jumbo rates are lower than conforming rates. Sometimes they're not. It really comes down to the makeup, meaning down payment and credit score and occupancy. That is really what's going to drive the interest rate on both conforming conventional loans as well as jumbo loans. Side by side, let's say it's a 780 credit score with 20% down, it's gonna be fairly close on interest rates and or costs. But depending on the day and what's going on in the markets, it actually could be better than a conventional conforming loan. And some days, not so much. Let's talk a moment about occupancy. What the heck is that? Well, occupancy is a classification that the lender is going to use to classify the intent of the borrower on what they're gonna do with the property. So if it is an owner-occupied classification, then that would mean that it is your intent to occupy the home within 60 days of the closing date as your primary residence. If that's not the case, then you might be looking at a secondary residence and or a vacation home. Perfectly fine on jumbo financing as well. The key with that is to remember that with a vacation home, you're going to sign a writer, a second home writer at close of escrow that's going to say that it is your intent to use this home as a vacation home for 12 months. And it's also going to tell you that you must retain control over the property, meaning that this is not something that would be a true investment property that you're going to rent out. Now, most jumbo writers also allow for you to do short term rentals, kind of like an Airbnb type of situation, but you must retain control over the property for the first 12 months of the home loan. Now, investment properties, we get calls all the time about jumbo investment properties. Those two are available. They're just available with a much higher down payment than when compared to a primary residence or a secondary or a vacation home. Now, there are situations where clients may not be able to qualify for a jumbo loan, but they do qualify for a jumbo price point. And in that situation, then we actually get a little bit more strategic and we start to look at these combo loans. And that would mean a loan where we would set a first mortgage at the conforming loan limit and the second mortgage or a home equity line of credit to cover part of the down payment. Let's say that you're interested in purchasing an $800,000 home. And for whatever reason, you can't qualify for a jumbo loan. The lender may discuss with you a combo loan. And that combo loan would be a scenario where you actually may have two loans, hence the word combo. And it may look like this. So $800,000 purchase price, let's say you want to do a 10% down. In that scenario, the lender is going to carve out that $720,000 that needs to be financed. Instead of doing it with one loan, they're going to do it with two loans. The first mortgage would be set at the conforming loan limit. And the second mortgage, generally a home equity line of credit, would be set for the balance needed to cover in that scenario the $720,000 in loans. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I truly have a passion for home loan education. Crazy, huh? But I do, and I'm committed to helping people make informed buying decisions. If you have questions for me on jumbo loans, please comment below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.